Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending another uh, Coffee with Chris. I'm real happy to have you here with me this morning to cover the basics of Navision relationship management in Navision that's out of the box, not just for customer relationship management, although that is a primary focus of today's presentation. The solution is available for storing and managing your contacts and interactions throughout your Navision system. Navision is an ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning System, where we store our bank information, our vendors, our customers, employees, and we can establish records in Navision for tracking all of your contacts so that you don't have data disconnected all over um, your operations. For example, uh, I'm not a customer of probably most of the people on the telephone, but you have my information somewhere. Hopefully you have my name written down. Maybe you have my phone number. Where do you store it? Do you have it on a post-it note, if I'm fortunate enough, uh, next to your computer? Or perhaps you have it stored in Outlook? And Navision is a great place to store that type of information. There is definitely a business benefit to deploying and utilizing the tools within your Navision system. The way I like to describe this is that it's a 360 degree view of your contact interactions, your customers interactions, your vendors interactions. You have the ability to maintain visibility of your sales orders, your reminders, credit memos, as well as emails, telephone calls, everything to do with correspondence with external and internal contacts and your business and your operations. Uh, you have the ability to maintain and track the customers perhaps when sales are declining before it's too late and be flagged about this information and I'm going to illustrate how. The, the uh, ultimate cost of losing a customer, it's certainly much more beneficial for every operation to maintain your existing client base rather than experiencing the costs of trying to find new ones. You can increase your sales by upselling and cross-selling. For each of you, if you just think about uh, the average revenue that you earn each year for, in, for one individual customer, and then you look at the number of customers that maybe you lost because you weren't aware of certain things, the impact on a business by implementing a relationship management system can easily uh, be measured and pay for itself and many of you already own the tool. The tools within Division Relationship Management provide you with a capability of storing your contacts, of storing profiles, the business information relevant to what type of account is this? Is it a customer? Is it a vendor? How large are they? How many employees do they have? What business or industry classification are they in? Most importantly, things in the profile like are there purchases more than last year's purchases? Are they a large user of discounts perhaps or uh, maybe they don't take discounts from you so that you can classify and categorize your contacts not just by information answered manually but by information that the system can automate based on the transactions that exist in the system. The system also incorporates capability that I'm going to cover on identifying duplicate records right when they're keyed in. So a new contact or prospect is entered. Maybe they're already in your system as a customer. Maybe you have existing customers that are duplicated. Navision will help identify those by scanning your database using some logic that I'll, I'll demonstrate. We have the ability to manage opportunities in Navision and manage a funnel. Look at the pipeline. Look at that various ways by your prospects, by your customers by campaigns that you might be running or promotions and or down to the individual salesperson then looking at those by the estimated value or the number of opportunities on what we use in division is uh, termed a trend scape view where you can analyze this on a periodic basis daily weekly monthly quarterly to look at trends we have the ability to manage tasks and to do's scheduled appointments and things like that right associated with your customers your contacts 
and your opportunities. They can be automated and driven based on opportunities in the system and based on completing one task each activity code can trigger automatically other activities and I'm going to illustrate how we set that up. I'm then going to illustrate how we do segments and what is a targeted marketing segment in division and the power of having at your fingertips not just profile questions and categories that you might manually record on a customer but the actual products that they've purchased from you. So we can create a segment by finding customers that bought certain products or that maybe you haven't talked to in a while or that did more business last year with you than they're doing this year so that you can be proactive and call them to trigger activities for your salespeople to make the telephone calls or schedule meetings, fax blasts, emails, and I'm going to illustrate that functionality to you. Then we're going to take a look at the interaction log and how Navision stores all of the activity, the quotes, the reminders, the finance charge memos, the emails, the telephone calls, all of the interactions with each of your business contacts. And finally, we'll take a look at how Navision synchronizes with your Outlook, how it can synchronize your contact folders, how it can synchronize your tasks and your calendared appointments. On the contact record in Navision, we're going to look at the contact info, a company or a person, how we store things like business relations and job responsibilities. So I'm using Navision 4.0 for this presentation and this should look familiar to most of you. The functionality is a bit different from what was available in the version 2 series, um, but in the version 3 series the Navision solution was rewritten with new contact functionality which most of you already own. When we look at a contact, we have the ability to identify their information associated with their name, their address. This is a company record and you'll notice that the type is company. There are also contacts for people. And if I do a list, you'll see how the system illustrates a company record in bold and then the contacts that work at that company uh, directly underneath those records indented. So it creates a very nice and useful view for being able to see your companies that you deal with and then the p personnel that work at each company. When we look at a company record, we have various tabs of data. On the first general tab, we have some very important data. What was the last date I modified this record? What was the date of my last interaction? The date I last attempted to contact or interact with this person? and my next scheduled to do date. I have their address information. On the communication tab, I have their telephone, their mobile phone, their fax, their pager. You can store all this information and this is separate and distinct from the customer card information that we've set up in the system. We have a segmentation tab where I indicate for a company type contact what mailing groups are they in and what business relation are they? When I look at the business relation option and drill down, you'll see that the one relation that this contact has is a customer. And if I do a lookup, you'll see that I can have other business relations like my accountants, my authorities, bank accounts, I can have my vendors, I can store my prospects, and as I select those records, you'll see that the system is tracking how many contacts are assigned that relation. So how many prospects do I have? Let me see them. And here are my prospect customers set up in the system. How many customers do I have contact records for? And here they are. Each contact uh, has a business relation and can be one or more business relations. We have the ability to attach each one to an industry group code. And go ahead and set up industry group codes and select and the same functionality is available and this information can be used in targeted segments or campaigns. I can exclude people from a segment if they said that they don't want to be associated with uh, segments that I construct or send out or submit. Okay, On the bottom half of this screen you'll see something called the profile and if we take a look at a profile we have the ability to store 
information associated with the um, the questions that I might ask, estimates of my what I think the answers might be. I can store uh, polling questions, things that I would ask, such as uh, you know the company ownership, are they private or public, their affiliations, how many employees do they have, and I can also store things like automatic metrics that are system driven, that look at parameters like sales discounts that they've taken, growth or decline of their business in terms of the business I do with them, profit metrics. Let's take a look at the profile for this company contact. And you'll see that their discount usage last year, you can see it was low. Uh, and where did it get low discount? And what qualifies as a low discount? Well, if I click on the ellipse, the system tells me that this answer reflects the state of this contact on this date, January 31st, 01, when I ran the periodic activity update contact class batch job. And to make this answer reflect the current state, execute the batch job again. So we run this monthly, perhaps, uh, and use this information. What's their purchase frequency last year? They were more than five times a year, and their purchase frequency this year. So this is a good sign. But I can use this type of information. Look at their turns last year. It was low, below 1,000, and this year, over 4,000. So their business is on the, on the rise with us. Um, and they're in the top 25% of my customers in terms of profitability. Number of employees is an answer that was entered manually by entering data against the company profile. Now, the profile is set up by going into marketing and then going into my setup folder and in the profile setting up a questionnaire and this is an example of a profile questionnaire and this one happens to have automatic contact classification now for that profit number where did it get that information from and you can see that there is a question linked to this and if I look at the question detail card I have the ability to track the customer classification, which fields it using, sales, profit, sales frequency, number of hits or invoices per year, their average invoice amount, discount, average overdue in number of days. So we have a variety of metrics we can use associated with customers, vendors, or just contacts like our prospects we can go ahead and put in date formulas for how far back does this look when calculating and what's the classification method is it a percentage some defined value we're gonna get as a result so when I have these profiles I establish these questions which fill in and then test the answer automatically so when it tests profit if it's from blank to 25 or 0 to 25 percent they're in my top 25 26 to 75 and so forth we can also have manual questionnaires and manual questionnaires like lead qualification for example is there a well-defined project how well does that fit our requirements and this type of information can be useful internally for a sales rep as well as for the manager reviewing how well their prospects have been qualified if I take a look at a contact card for the, a person that works at Canon, like Dave Hodgson, you'll see that the information here is his education level, his hobbies, um, his sex, for targeted marketing, targeted applications, versus on the company record, once again, you'll see that I've got this type of information stored. The engine for duplicate identification. I'm first going to illustrate where that's set up. And we take a look at duplicate searching. And basically, it uses something called fuzzy logic, meaning it's not looking for an exact match, but portions of matches of various data elements. And I will illustrate exactly how that works. It can be automatic. So and when a new customer is added, it'll tell you, bam, there's a duplicate in the system, or it can be manually invoked. I'm going to manually run it. The parameters are constructed and manipulated by you, 
and there was a screen to go in and resolve your duplicates. So let's take a look at the setup of this. And if I go ahead and go to sales setup and we take a look at the marketing setup, various tabs exist and one of them is our duplicates tab. And on here we're going to tell the system that a search hit is required of a 60% match to match or indicate something's a duplicate. And if I click on search strings, here are the data fields that the system is trying to match. And that's where it's that fuzzy logic. It's looking for the first and last five characters, based on the length of five, of a name. So in the name field, if the first five match, it's a hit. If the last five match, it's a hit. The address, the zip, the city, the phone. And we can go ahead and add many fields that exist for searching and how many characters are we looking to match. And based on a search hit of 60%, the system will automatically identify these items as a duplicate. The management of duplicate and running the process and eliminating or correcting duplicates is done from marketing, periodic activities, where I go in and I call up my duplicate screen and look at duplicate contacts. And as duplicates are added to the system, the system conduct, conducts or assembles a list that shows me my contacts that it thinks are duplicated. And you'll see here that contact 64 has the same address, zip, city, and GST code as contact 129. And if I click on the separate, it identifies the related record. So here I have many contacts that have the same information. And the system's going through and identifying these. From this screen, I can go ahead and look up the record. I can call up the contact card. And if they have no activity and no profile, perhaps I just want to delete them. So I'm not sending out duplicate efforts to the same person sending emails more than one time. When you have your rules established, we run a duplicate search string and tell it to go. And it runs through all my contacts and basically updates this tickler or this list that you then review. Okay, we're going to go in and we're going to take a look at opportunity management. And opportunity management is my pipeline or my funnel management. It's where I can review this funnel or pipeline by sales rep, by campaign, by customer. When I create opportunities, and I'm going to drill down into one, we can look at the various sales cycles we establish for each opportunity based on the size of the opportunity or the size of the customer and have I done business with them before. Each sales cycle has multiple stages with different formulas built in for calculating the percentage of the opportunity that I am allowed to recognize on my sales forecast reporting um, and also has certain activities and requirements in order to progress to the next stage in the cycle. There are automatic task assignments based on various state stages and we'll go through and take a look at those. Then we'll look at the way you would uh, create a quotation from an opportunity and how we process that quote and Pro, uh, record win-loss resolution associated with this. So let's go in and take a look at an opportunity and how the system tracks those. We'll go up to sales and we'll come down to our opportunities trendscape window. And this trendscape, if I go back in time, let's go to where my data is in Cronus and you'll see that I'm looking by sales rep. Well, let's look, instead of looking by sales rep at my opportunities, let's look perhaps by campaign. And I have one campaign that's active, and I can see the average estimated value, or how many opportunities. There's two opportunities. Let's look by contact. And by contact, here are the number of opportunities I have open for each contact, expanded out, so I'm looking by company and then at the individual contact person that I'm dealing with if I have attached the opportunity to an individual that works for a company. I can go ahead and look at the estimated value of the opportunities by contact or I can go back and look by sales rep. 
So when I'm looking at this information, I'm looking at the estimated value of all opportunities for the three sales reps with activity right now. And Bart Duncan, Deborah, and John have 200, Bart in 2001 has $255,000 worth of opportunity. Let's see what his calculated value is. And the calculated value is based on the steps completed in the sales cycle. And you can see that although he's got a lot of opportunities estimated, doesn't really have too much done with those opportunities. The average deal size he's working on, average estimated value, and all of this information can be drilled down into. So if I was to drill down into these work projects that BART is working on, let's go ahead and look at an opportunity. And I can see there are four opportunities in the system right now. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look at these. I'll scroll across a bit and I'll see there's a $200,000 opportunity out here. Let's go look at that one because that's a quite a big one. It's four times larger than any other opportunity and it's also tied to a campaign. It's in the sales cycle. The current stage is one. Let's go ahead and look at the David Oliver Lawrence opportunity at A. Gibson Law Firm and I'll call up the opportunity card. Now this opportunity is currently it's for a existing customer that is a large account. Let's take a look at what sales cycles are in this Cronus database. And I can see that I've got four constructed. And I've got a probability calculation rule um, and how I would calculate steps in the sales cycle to come up with my calculated value of this opportunity. And let's look at for existing customers, large accounts, what are my sales cycle stages? And if I look at the sales cycle stages, I've got five stages from the initial needs, uh, understanding needs meeting, product presentation and a workshop, a proposal, and then ultimately signing the contract. When I get to stage one, my completion calculation is 2%. And I have an activity tied to each of these. When I look at my activities and I do a list, these are the activities I've constructed in the system. And based on when I create an opportunity and I start it, so it's in the initial phase, what are the tasks I want the system to construct? If I look at this activity card, you'll see that it creates two tasks for me, or to-dos. Verify the quality of the opportunity with a high priority, and then identify the key players. If I looked at, for example, an understanding needs to do what are those to do's and when I complete the initial it's going to automatically create four activities set a cus establish customer needs set up a meeting and that's a phone call create a meeting which will synchronize with my outlook appointment calendar go through expectations and needs and then verify and change the customer needs so as you can see there's quite a bit of functionality in here for managing an opportunity and driving tasks associated with it. When I take a look at this opportunity, I can use the wizard to update this opportunity. And let's go ahead and update this and go to the next stage. And if I choose next to go ahead and go to my next stage, it's an understanding needs meeting. The date is today, next. and do I want to update the value of this opportunity? I'm going to leave it at $200,000. The system is bringing in the default chance of success and cancel the existing to-dos. Finish. Uh, the estimated closing date has to be later than this. I couldn't have closed it yet, so I'll say that this hopefully will close by December 31st, 2007 and finish. And I've now updated this opportunity. Uh, it tells me that I'm 35 percent complete in this opportunity and if I look at the opportunity um, one of the things that I can do is perhaps the customer has called me and asked me for a quote. Let's go ahead and create a sales quote and uh, this wizard helps me up, up, update the opportunity. Um, I didn't try to close it, I just wanted to go ahead and create a quote. Opportunity. 
assign a sales quote, and the system is going to assist me to create a quotation. So it's creating a quote, it's bringing in the detailed information associated with the campaign, the opportunity number, the sales rep code, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in here that it's items, and I'll put in whatever products they were going to buy. They're going to buy some desks. I need to just go ahead and choose whatever the customer was associated with this, or I can have what we call a customer template. Now, a customer template for my customers, if I have one, the system will go through and automatically allow me to construct the details based on a template without having a customer. So if this was just a prospect on this record, the system will allow me to go through and process my quote and then automatically create a customer record for me when I create or convert this quotation to a order. So I'm going to go ahead here and put in that they're going to buy a hundred of these and that's a hundred thousand dollars and I'll go ahead and put in another product, the guest chair and I'll put in a hundred chairs and my opportunity now is a little bit of a lower value it's hundred nineteen thousand dollars so my sales opportunity was a bit optimistic but I've got this quotation uh, in the system and I'll hit escape when I close back to the opportunity card you'll see that the system has a document number attached where my quote is now accessible from my opportunity card and as I go through and process this transaction, um, perhaps the, the quotation is sent. Let's go ahead and call up my quotation. And I'll go back. So time passes. Um, the quotation is received by the customer or the contact. They like what they see in terms of this quotation. And they go ahead and they say that they have an interest in uh, accepting this deal or ta or purchasing this product from me. Okay. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to make an order from this. When I tell the system to go ahead and make an order, um, that tells me this system tells me that I have to go ahead and create a customer. Do I want to create this customer? And I'll say yes. And the system now automatically goes through and creates customer 10 for me based on the data from the prospect and the data associated with the template. And now it's giving me my quantity warnings that I don't have enough on hand and I'll say that's okay. Now the system is warning me that an open opportunity is linked to my quotation. Do I wish to close this opportunity? And I'll say yes. And now the system via a wizard is asking me what is the reason for closing this opportunity? And I'll go ahead and let's figure this out. Was it knowledge of the customer's business? Um, where is good demonstration? Maybe it's a good demo. I'll put competent consultant and the dollar value for this opportunity. And finish the system cancels my existing to-dos and updates my opportunity. Uh, um, okay. From a, that opportunity happened to be associated with a campaign. Campaigns can be used to track activity. They ha can contain special pricing and special agreements, maybe promotions or coupons we can have an active date range associated with a promotion or a campaign they are attached to a specific market segment that we'll have to construct and we can store dimensions to publish dimension information to our reporting so that you can filter the results of the revenues the costs the profit margins as results based on participation in a specific campaign so let's go ahead and call up a campaign so from marketing, and this is an example of a campaign card. 
Uh, this campaign 1004 is my spring offer. A campaign can have statuses for tracking and filtering, planned, approved, initiated, and we can construct various campaign parameters for sorting and reporting. We have a starting date and an ending date for this campaign. Associated with a campaign, we can track sales prices. And if I look here, you'll see that I could set up by campaign various item number, unique unit prices from my starting date and ending date. I can construct specific sales line discount structures for groups of items or all items that are associated with the specific campaign. I can track the to-dos and activities and I can look at opportunities in a list or in a bar graph. And if I take a look at the bar graph and I go back to a time period when I have some activity, I can track associated with this campaign the opportunities and their estimated value of all the opportunities associated with this campaign or this sales rep or one specific contact if I'd like and look at the estimated value of opportunities and the conversion factor to see have I completed stages in the sales cycle based on having an opportunity attached so I can track how effective these campaigns were to progressing my opportunities or pushing things down in the pipeline or pushing them through the funnel. I have the ability to go ahead and activate a campaign and I choose an activate function to activate or deactivate a campaign and I would assign a segment and we go ahead and attach segments which are target markets people that attended the trade show that qualify for this promotion people that I mailed the coupon out to so the system will automatically allow them now to participate in that opportunity a segment is something we construct in division to produce mailing lists to allow participation in a campaign to produce email blasts, fax blasts, to do automatic task assignment uh, distribution, generate a list of you must make telephone calls out to these customers because they were in our top 25 percent last year and we haven't heard from them in the past six months. So create phone calls, schedule meetings, uh, create to-dos or tasks. So let's take a look at and create a segment and a segment is constructed let's just go ahead and create a new one and I'm gonna create a new one to sell product to anyone you know 1896s so anyone that did anything with the 1896s which is one of my hot items uh, I think a few people bought it we'll go ahead and generate a list of the people that purchased that item from me in the past I can filter this so it's just for one sales rep if a sales rep wants to create his or her own segments. When I'm finding these people, what do I want to do with them? I can log the segment and then attach it to a campaign or something along those lines, create mailing lists, or I can generate an interaction. And what type of interaction do I want to do? Well, an interaction template, as an example, like do I want to create quotes? Do I want to generate activities to create a telephone call, uh, as an example? Do I want to generate a letter or an invitation? And we'll go ahead and I'll say that it's going to be a business letter I'm going to generate, a cover, a cover letter, uh, a mailing list, mailing labels that I just want to print out. Uh, the subject for this, please buy new feature for 1896S and do I want to send this print a hard copy generate emails or fax directly from the system if I want to generate emails how do I want to go ahead and do that do I want to ignore the contacts correspondence type we can set up on each contact what is their preferred method of correspondence do they want mail do they want emails I can say ignore it and for everyone that has an email the system will automatically generate these when I log the segment do I want to assign a default cost or a default time associated with the effort for generating these? And uh, do I want to send Word documents as attachments? 
or do I want to just embed HTML directly in the email? So now that I have what do I want to do, and I could link it to a campaign or not, I won't choose a campaign on this one, I now want to go through and add contacts. And there are wizards to do this, but I'm going to walk you through how we would manually choose which contacts to add. And when I say manually choose, all we're going to do is choose the filters. So I can choose data fields that are static fields from the contact, or might be other, other fields like the last date I contacted them. The profile questionnaire, and I can choose from those profiles the customer information, the company info, my top 25%, and just add all those contacts, my low, low, lower 25%. I can choose data elements from people that are part of a certain mailing group. I can look for people that had an interaction entry from me before. So people that I sent the letter to last year, people that participated in a campaign to follow up with them. I can target specific job responsibility codes, different industry, group, industry groups or specific industry groups. On the business relation, I'm going to say I only want customers, as an example. And now I won't get vendors that I buy this product from included in this campaign. And now this is where the rubber hits the road. My value entries. I have all of the item ledger entry details available at my fingertips. So I can say find anyone that bought, here's my item list, the 1896S from me. Am I looking for a certain posting date? Maybe there's a lot recall issue and I want to send a notification out. Or, you know, anything you can think of looking for items in a certain posting group, any of those data fields associated with the value entry are available to me to choose as a filter. So here I'm choosing everyone that ever bought an 1896S from me, and I'll push OK. And the system looks through and it finds three people that were co contacts in the system that purchased that item from me before. I can now refine that list. If I had too many people, to generate phone calls, as an example, I can go ahead and remove, reducing the list by taking people away that meet certain criteria. Like, let's say, reduce this list by anyone that I had an interaction log entry, any entry that I talked to this week. So, you know, I'll put in, um, you know, from Monday through today. If I talk to them this week, remove them. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to annoy them. Talk to them again. So notice now the number of criteria actions. <coughs> if I drill down into this, you'll see that it's telling me what were the criteria applied to this segment. And I can see that I have a contact business relation customer that bought item 1896S, and I removed the contacts that I spoke to this week. Had any interaction, a piece of correspondence from within the system. Now I can go ahead and if I choose to export a file, <coughs> I can create attachments for all of these records. I can create phone call activities for these records to go ahead and drive and use the business intelligence that I have stored in my ERP system and take advantage of it rather than just leaving it disconnected outside of the system. And when I do take advantage of that data and I create emails or Word documents or telephone calls, it's important for everyone in my company that might have an interaction with them to know what's going on. And that's where the interaction log comes into play. This engine allows document management where I can attach Word documents, emails for my contacts. It automatically will attach anything that I assign to create an interaction, orders, shipment notifications that I send from the system, credit memos, customer statements, as well as telephone calls, Word documents that I might mail merge. I can log emails, and I'll put a, I put a little asterisk here. This can be automatic. Uh, it logs your emails through Microsoft Exchange Server, if you own the email logging granule. So correspondence coming into your operations from any contact, as long as they're set up with an email address in division, the system will attach a copy of that email to their interaction log. 
orders, invoices, credits, telephone calls, meetings. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the interaction log for a contact. So if I call up my contact card, this is the Canon Group, and let's look at the contact interaction log entries. You'll see that the system stores from me the shipment records, the invoices, the credit memos, the service orders. Here's an invitation I sent to play golf and buy something. And there's an attachment stored. Now I'll just create a new one just to show you how this works. Uh, this wizard will go ahead and create the interaction and I could have done these in bulk from a segment. I'm doing one manually at this time. The type of interaction here is uh, let's just do an invitation to play golf. It's starting to get nice out and join me to play golf and bring checkbook. And I can record a book underneath here through this comment entry window and I'll push next and when I push next the system's going to open Microsoft Word and it's going to store my or mail merge in my details from Cronus my company logo um, the information from the customer card and I'll go ahead and I'll say please join me at my club to play golf on four one, 2007, bring your checkbook. I've got some great new products. And I'll go ahead and close that document. And the system says, okay, what do you want to do with that Word doc? Do you want to store it? And I'm going to say, yes, I do want to store that in my system. And how do I want to send this out? And I'm going to send it via email. Uh, when did it take place? The date and time is recorded in the system. The direction, direction of information flow is outbound, and I don't have an evaluation yet. And I'll go ahead and say finish. And the system's going to create my email. It's going to uh, merge this data. It's going to ask me, is it allowed to access my Outlook? And I'll say, yes, it is. And it's going through Outlook and if you're doing a batch email you would have to say allow this outside program to access for a while and you'll see in my outbox in Outlook there's an email to Canon join me to play golf bring your checkbook and if I double click on that you'll see here's a letter formatted as HTML sitting in my outbox ready to send if I close out of Outlook and go back into Navision you'll see that the system is has a record here that I stored this document and I can click on that at any time or anyone can say what, is, what was this email that Peter generated and click on it and it's going to go back into my Word document and show me the exact Word document that was created way back when. From an Outlook synchronization perspective very powerful function um, is the ability to accomplish some of your stuff offline. Storing your contact records that you create in Division in your Outlook system, storing the tasks that you work on, your to-dos, and marking when you've completed them in Outlook, and storing your calendar. And that is accomplished by assigning a salesperson record. So if I go ahead and I call up a sales rep, like Annette Hill, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm actually Annette Hill today, and I've got here the, the Annette, her code, I've got the email address established, and on my Outlook integration tab, I've established my Navision user ID. When I log in to Navision as CFBS, the system knows that I am Annette, I have enabled synchronization, and I have mapped to a specific Outlook profile name, and I have mapped a specific Outlook look contacts folder and I've created a new folder in Outlook and if I click browse you'll see that I I can go ahead and under contacts I created a new one called Navision contacts and I'll just push OK and the system goes and stores the specific contact folder the specific task folder and the specific calendar folder 
on my notification tab notify me if some other user changes my contacts, my tasks, or my appointments. And under synchronization, when I synchronize my activities, how far back do I want to go? So just go back one week old and I'll play catch up, but don't give me stuff that's a month old and synchronize out the next three months. And when I go ahead in here, I can choose to synchronize with Outlook. So if I was to create a task, let's just go ahead and I'll create a new to-do and create a to-do and the type of to-do, it's a phone call and I'm going to call Canon uh, about something and who's the contact, I'll go ahead and I'll choose Annette, uh, that's me. And you would typically construct these from and a the contact themselves, but I gotta find Canon, the Canon group, call Dave Hodgson, and next. And is this tied to a campaign? No. Is it tied to an opportunity? No. It's just a follow-up call. And finish. It's not recurring. And now there's a there's a message here to call Canon. And this task is now constructed. And uh, I can go ahead and generate other activities. It's not in Outlook yet, but when I log into Navision every day, the system will say, do you want to synchronize? And I'll go ahead and I'll just manually synchronize with Outlook. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, do I want to update all items? I changed a setting in here. Let's see if it's synced with Outlook. Um, if I look at my tasks, here's my task, call the Canon group, and I'll go ahead and I called this up. I can go ahead and record here what I've done, and ultimately when I record this is a completed task, and I can click here to jump right into my Navision to do to see more details on it, but I'll close this and save my changes. And the fact that I've completed this task, I'll just minimize the vision. And when I look at the salesperson to do, you'll see how this is still open. Well, let's go ahead and synchronize with Outlook. So the person worked offline, and I won't sync the contacts. And my synchronized appointments are updated. So if the sales rep logs in and looks at their to do's, or activities, hmm, it didn't synchronize. I changed something in my Outlook, um, so I apologize for that, but the system does synchronize your activities, your contact records. Back in Outlook, another thing, and the reason that I didn't use my regular contacts folder is that when I look at my contacts in the system, if I come in and look at contacts. I created this Navision contacts because all of the contacts in the system are now stored in my Outlook. So I didn't want to confuse these, but if I was to add a contact here, the system will go through and update and feed my contacts back and forth. So, okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, if you want to harness this power, obviously you can get training on this software. Uh, we can come on site, just contact your account manager, contact myself. Um, but I'm going to unmute the phones and allow people to ask any questions that you might have. All callers are unmuted. So if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to unmute your phone and ask any questions. Hi Peter, this is Mike Hogan. Um, I noticed this is tied into Outlook. Will it also tie into uh, Lotus Notes? Uh, unfortunately, the answer to the question, will it work with Lotus Notes, uh, is no. Um, it is synchronizing with Outlook and if you want the email logging to automatically attach your emails that requires an exchange server so Microsoft has uh, not created a function to synchronize with Lotus Notes okay thank you you're welcome
for those people that don't have Exchange and they still want to just have an Outlook contact storage engine, the synchronization with Outlook does not require an Exchange server. So if anyone uses a personal version of Outlook, um, that might get you some uh, synchronization capability. Are there any other questions? Oh, I tried to put some, uh, you know, decent amount of information into the past hour, and hopefully, uh, people have learned something about the powerful tool that you have. Um, if you have an interest, we can go through it at a much slower pace <laughs> and assist you with implementing and taking advantage of the functionality that you have. If um, anyone has any any uh, feedback, by all means, uh, you know, fill out the feedback forms and feel free to get in touch with me. And I look forward to seeing you at the next Coffee with Chris. Have a great day.